Hey guys, it is Jen with Mother Time. Welcome back to my channel. It is the final weekend of my Christmas in July series. I've had so much fun sharing Christmas crafts with you all month long. I hope you've enjoyed them too. Today I have some brand new Christmas craft ideas to share with you. I cannot wait to show you them, so stay tuned. And if you are new here to my channel, welcome. I love sharing home decor, cooking, and DIY here on my channel. So if those are videos you enjoy watching, Click that subscribe button below so you never miss a video. Okay, you guys, you know what time it is. Grab yourself a frozen hot chocolate because it's been hot out there. Sit back, relax, and let's get to crafting. First up, I'm going to make a gingerbread baking coat tray. I love the way this turned out. Wait until you see. So I have this 12 by 18 pallet sign tray. It is actually from Chocotour. Unfortunately, this one is no longer available, but you could find a tray that you have on hand or something similar at the craft store. I'm using a 12 by 18 and I'm going to paint it with this beautiful Christmas red. It is called Cherry. So when I'm using chalk paste to paint, I like to wet it down just a little bit because the paste is really thick. So I put my paste on a plate. I add a few little squirts of water to it just to thin it out. And then I'm going to paint my tray. Now I have my gingerbread transfer. I did share this in another Christmas crafting video where I made a beautiful sign. And I love that these transfers are reusable. So now I'm going to make a tray. So I just take my transfer. I'm going to make sure I get all the air bubbles. So I use my little squeegee to go over it really well. And then once it's on there nice and flat, I'm going to use white chalk paste to go over some parts of the design. I'm not gonna go over the entire thing and then I'm gonna have this beautiful tray. If you'd like to make one of these trays too, I'll include a link for all the supplies I used in the description below. The handles I'm using are from Hobby Lobby. And again, this particular tray I have is no longer available, but you could find something at the craft store or maybe you have something on hand or even check a thrift store as well. And it also will include the paste colors I'm using. I just love this red tray with the white lettering. It is so Christmassy, but of course you could change the colors out to match your Christmas decor. Chalk paste dries very quickly, so I wanna go over my design and then I'm going to remove my transfer and wash my transfer and then I can reuse it again. You could use the entire transfer, use little bits and parts of it. So here it is all done. I have it covered and now I'm gonna remove my transfer and wait until you see this beautiful design. And once this dries, if you want to spray it or add a sealant on top, you can as well. And now I'm going to attach these gorgeous handles. They are from Hobby Lobby. I will also include a link for the video where I made these really cute peppermints you see, as well as the original gingerbread baking co sign I made in the description below. And here is this beautiful gingerbread baking coat tray all done. Isn't it beautiful? I love the red. This is a beautiful decorative tray to have out or to use for serving all season long. Next, I'm going to make gingerbread house ornaments. I cut out some felt to make a house. I hot glue the two pieces together, leave an opening at the bottom, add some stuffing. Now I'm going to use some puffy paint to paint these up. Once the puffy paint is dry, I spray it with some spray glue and add some glitter for a festive touch. These turned out so cute and perfect for a gingerbread tree or to even use on packages for the holidays. Next up, I'm going to make a really cute Christmas window pane sign. So I grabbed four of these six by eight canvases from Dollar Tree. I removed the canvas, so now I have an unfinished frame, which I love because these are really lightweight. So they're great to use on projects like this. So I'm just going to put the four together and then hot glue them all together as well. Now you could use some 
wood glue as well, but I feel that the hot glue works just fine. Once I have them all glued together, this is how it looks. Now I'm going to distress this a little bit. I'm just kind of grabbing stuff and winging it until I get the distressing I want. So first I add a coat of Mod Podge on top. Now I do this just for the distressing effect. When you add Mod Podge and while it's still wet, you add paint, it kind of gives it a crackled look. So I just add some Mod Podge, then I go in with some white, and then I go in with some brown. I'm just kind of going back and forth until I get the look I want, adding a little Mod Podge here and there. And it just helps with the crackled look. Uh, the color white that I'm using is called White Adirondack. It is by Folk Art. And then I'm also using Folk Art paint in the color Mushroom. I love this combination together. And this is how it looks. So now I'm going to place it on top of my gift bag. I got this beautiful gift bag from Dollar Tree a few years ago. I had a couple still left over. I'm holding on to them because I love them so much. And now I'm just gonna cut out the gift bag so it fits my frame. I'm gonna place it on top and then I'm going to hot glue the frame on top of the picture. Next up, I decided to add a piece of foam board behind it just for a little bit more stability. This is totally optional, but it just really makes it nice and secure. So I cut out a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and then I'm going to hot glue it to the back. Finally, I attached some greens with my staple gun. You could hot glue them on too, but I had my staple gun handy, so I just stapled them on. I did hot glue on a really pretty red check bow. This ribbon is actually from Dollar Tree as well. And look at how beautiful this turned out. I absolutely love it. I've been wanting to make this for a while. I'm so glad I did because this just turned out so pretty. Now be on the lookout for pretty bags like this, whether you make a window pane sign like this or even just to pop in a frame. There are some really, really cute gift bags out there and there's so much you can do with them. So be on the lookout for really cute ones. Dollar Tree always has really cute ones every season as well. Next up, I'm going to make a really cute faux Christmas cutting board. So I found this cutting board recently in the fall section at Dollar Tree. And then this is the new 2024 calendars. These always sell out quickly at Dollar Tree. So grab them when you see them. This is from the December print. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. So I'm just kind of tracing it around with my finger and I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to Mod Podge it on top, but then I'm going to paint the cutting board first. First, I was just going to distress the cutting board with some of my Distress Oxide in vintage photo. I figured just to kind of give it a darker look, but I wanted to then change it up. So after I do this distressing, which you see I'm doing here, I'm just kind of going around, but I wanted to show you this to give you an option. Maybe you like this look more, just to kind of show you different ways that you can use this cutting board because it actually is a really cute cutting board, just like this too for fall. But then, so see here, here it is. But then I decided I was going to paint it black. So I'm gonna grab some black chalk paint and then just paint the cutting board part. I'm gonna not paint the inside because I'm still going to attach that Joy print on top of that with some Mod Podge. As you see here, I give it the thumbs up. I really like the black here better. So now I'm going to take 
some Mod Podge and I'm going to add a coat on top of where I'm going to place that print. I let the Mod Podge dry completely. I love this method. Let me know in the comments below if you've done this before. It's going to make it really, really smooth and you're not gonna have any wrinkles. So now I place my print on top of the dried Mod Podge. Then I use a piece of parchment paper on top and then I just iron it on and the iron heats that Mod Podge underneath and then I will be left with this beautiful print that is nice and smooth. Make a simple bow using this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to attach it to the sign along with some greens. I do staple gun the greens on, but you could hot glue them on as well. I'm also taking this ribbon and putting it through this hole as well for an added little detail. And here it is all done. I love the way it turned out. I'm so happy I painted it black too. And this would be so pretty sitting on a kitchen counter, leaning against the backsplash for the holidays. Next up, I'm going to make fun and festive ornaments. I love this kit because you get the shapes to make them and then you also can get the transfers and the transfers you can use on other projects as well. You can also break this up and make little gifts. Also perfect for a Christmas craft night with family and friends. So I'm gonna make a couple of the ornaments. The first one, I just removed my transfer. Then I'm going to place it on this ornament and smooth it out really well. And then I'm going to apply my chalk paste. I chose to use the color Storm, but you could use whatever color you want. I'll include a link in the description below for the supplies to make this, and then you can pick out the colors you want to use. We do have single packets too, so you could even make really cute gifts, which I'll show you an idea here as well. And once I've removed my transfer, I wash, and here it is ready to use again. Now I'm going to do the stocking, so the same thing. I've removed my transfer, and I just have a little fuzzing cloth. You could use a towel. I place it on top of the ornament, smooth it out really well, and I'm going to use that Storm chalk paste again. So I just apply a coat of it. You don't need to use it too much. A little bit of paste goes a long way. I smooth it out nice and smooth. I will remove my transfer, wash it off, and I can use this transfer again too. I decided to add some glitter on top of the ornaments as well, so I spray it with some spray glue and then sprinkle it with some glitter and look at how festive these turned out. Now the kit also includes some twine to add, but I'm going to change it up and add some of this ribbon that I had on hand. And look how pretty these turned out. You can make them for yourself to hang on your tree, or these would be really cute gift toppers too. Now I'm also gonna show you how you could give this as a gift so you could break this set up and have five little gifties. So I'm gonna cut out the transfer and put it in a gift bag along with the ornament, the twine, even the squeegee and a paste packet. So you could have a really cute gift to hand out. This would be really cute for like Bible study group too, or to hand out to kids to make little ornaments. So many ways that you can make these or gift these for the holidays. And finally, I add some little green sprigs to just make it a festive, and then I'm going to tie it with some ribbon and add a cute little bell. Music 
And here is this gift packaged up, ready to give. I absolutely love this idea. And here are the ornaments I made, beautiful for a tree or to even put on some Christmas packages. Next up, I'm going to use one of these designs from this Christmas tear tray transfer. These transfers can be used to make accessories for a tear tray, which we have on my website, which I'll include a link for in the description below. So if you wanna make some cute accessories for a tear tray, but you can also use these designs for other things like this. I have this bucket that I found at Hobby Lobby on clearance. So I'm gonna use the December 25th design and I'm gonna place it on my bucket, smooth it out really well, and then add some some black chalk paste. And I will include a link for this design in the description below. Once I've removed my transfer, I'm going to wash it off and then place it back on the backing and I can reuse the transfer again. Next, I'm going to add some floral foam into the bottom of the bucket and then just cut out a bunch of greens that I had on hand and add them into the bucket. Next, I'm going to make a simple bow with some black ribbon that I had on hand from Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to hot glue it onto the bucket. And finally, I wanted to add in a few bells for a little jingle, so I'm just attaching these bells to some floral picks so they don't fall into the bottom of my arrangement. So I just attach them to the picks and I'm going to place them in the arrangement. And this is how it turned out. I absolutely love it. It is so classic and elegant looking, perfect to hang anywhere for the holidays. Okay, you guys, that's it for the Christmas in July series. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. And let me know in the comments below what your favorite craft was, whether it was from today's video or one of my other Christmas crafting videos. And for daily decor and DIY inspo, make sure you follow me over on Facebook or Instagram at Mother Time. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.